a freighter by any other name is still a freighter. Yet the Kobayashi Maru would become one of the best known freighters in all of the Federation, thanks to a series of events that would see it included in one of Starfleet's most intensive tests, the no-win scenario. But what is the history behind this infamous test? What were some of the more clever reactions and solutions to it? Well, today we find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth, a Star Trek web series that normally looks at the truth or canon information to dispel the myths that have surfaced on any given topic. Today's episode continues our journey through beta canon, this time taking a look at the no-win scenario and why the Kobayashi Maru became one of the most famous starships in Starfleet history. Of course, there isn't actually much information available on the history of the test or individual officer solutions in Alpha Canon, so what I've done is thoroughly researched the test through Beta Canon, combined it with Alpha Canon, and filled in some of the gaps with my own imagination. All to give you good trinaries a little bit more historical info to chew on. As a result though, this video should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Starfleet Academy was well known for its rigorous testing of its officers before sending them out into space. But no other test would become so well known, so well feared by the cadets, than that of the Kobayashi Maru scenario. Testing knowledge and response times to various events was all well and good, and Starfleet did in fact have these types of tests in spades. But quite early on in Starfleet's existence, it had realized that in space, winning isn't always an option. And how a crew member faced death, the prospect of losing the battle and their life was even more important than watching a person excel in their studies. And so Starfleet Academy designed a test that would specifically reveal exactly how a crew member faced those no-win scenarios. The test itself was partly based on real-life events, though the simulation would be continually upgraded and changed to reflect whatever state galactic politics was in at the time the cadet took the test. In 2155, the ECS Kobayashi Maru sent with parts and supplies for a special team setting up Starfleet's first listening post, designed to keep an eye on the Romulan Star Empire, was hit by a gravitic mine while traversing the Gamma Hydra sector. At the time, Gamma Hydra was not considered a disputed area, although it was close to what Starfleet believed was Romulan held space. The NX-02 Columbia, which was overseeing the listening post's construction, received the distress call of the Kobayashi Maru and immediately went to investigate. Upon arrival, it was discovered that the Kobayashi Maru had drifted into what was clearly believed to be Romulan space. And so, Captain Hernandez of the Columbia was left with a choice. Either enter Romulan space and risk losing her starship to the Romulan Star Empire, and perhaps start a war between Earth and Romulus, or leave the starship to its fate. Captain Hernandez didn't falter or even pause in her decision ordering Columbia into Romulan space. Luckily, there is where the similarities end between the test and reality, as there were no Romulan ships in wait for the Columbia, and the NX-02 was able to tow the Kobayashi Maru to safety. Using this mission as a starting point to create their test, Starfleet Academy would create a scenario like no other. For no matter what the cadet in command of the ship was able to do, they would always ultimately lose the battle, as the computer would send more and more waves of enemies and the starship itself would be more and more damaged with each passing moment. Although this test was a no-win scenario, it provided clear and definitive psychological data about the cadet commanding the starship. Should said cadet choose to rescue the Kobayashi Maru, the Academy was able to determine the go-getter achiever style of command this cadet would follow in the future. Should the cadet choose to uphold Starfleet regulations and leave the Kobayashi Maru to be destroyed or lost, the Academy board immediately knew that this would be a by-the-book style commanding officer, and could plan that officer's career path accordingly. Oddly enough, even though it was a no-win scenario, 
there were those cadets who actually beat the no-win test. One in particular was that of cadet James T. Kirk. Kirk would reprogram the simulation before the third time he took the test, making it so that the attacking Klingons would believe he was a famous starship captain and offer to assist with the rescue of the Kobayashi Maru. Starfleet Academy was shocked by this outcome and convened a general inquiry with Starfleet Command into the whole situation. Believing Kirk had outright cheated to win the test, Kirk was called to account for his actions. When asked by Starfleet Command why he did it, he simply answered that he did not believe in a no-win scenario, and continued on to explain how the test itself cheated, that no Starfleet starship could get that much damage that quickly, and that no sector of space would have that many Klingon starships ready to destroy a single Federation starship. After deliberating, Starfleet Command would return with a commendation for Cadet Kirk for original thinking, and would keep a close eye on the cadet's career, expecting greatness from this officer. And of course, they were not disappointed, as James T. Kirk would become one of the youngest, most famous captains in Starfleet history. In fact, although completely coincidental, the command crew of Kirk's USS Enterprise 1701 would have many of its officers who had interesting though controversial responses to the test. Montgomery Scott, future chief engineer of the Enterprise, would trick the simulation into overestimating the effectiveness of a theoretical attack against the Klingon ships, using a theory in regards to Klingon shield points that apparently overlapped. Faced with the knowledge of such attacks, though quite valid in theory, would not work in reality and that Scott himself, who had disproved the theory, knew this. The Academy Board reassigned Scott from the Command Training Program back to the Engineering Program, the program he originally wanted to be a part of. Pavel Chekhov's solution to the scenario was to self-destruct his starship, taking the Klingons, the Kobayashi Maru, and his ship out in one foul swoop. Hikaru Sulu, realizing the consequences of entry into the neutral zone by any Starfleet vessel, elected not to violate the zone and protect the Federation from a costly war with the Klingon Empire. And even though never actually taking the Kobayashi Maru test himself, Captain Spock, Kirk's original first officer, would reference the test while dying in the Dilithium Chamber aboard the refit USS Enterprise during the Khan Genesis Incident of 2285, comparing his sacrifice of himself to save the ship and crew as his solution to the no-win scenario. James T. Kirk's own nephew, Peter Kirk, would also beat the no-win scenario, but in a completely different way. Using his knowledge of Romulan customs, unanticipated by the test's designers, Peter Kirk would challenge the lead Romulan captain to ritual combat. Since all other hostilities must cease during a duel, the Romulan ships could only watch as Peter's ship was able to rescue the Kobayashi Maru and escape unharmed. In the 24th century, the test is still in use, becoming a staple of an Academy cadet's career. William T. Riker, eventual first officer of the USS Enterprise D and captain of the USS Titan, would beat the no-win scenario as well though Riker's solution to the puzzle would be classified and he was under strict orders never to divulge his solution. Cadet Mackenzie Calhoun, eventual captain of the USS Excalibur, would win the no-win scenario by destroying the Kobayashi Maru itself, disabling the attacking ships in the process, and allowing his ship and crew to escape the battle unharmed. At first, this solution bothered his instructors, as he had been willing to kill those who he had been attempting to rescue. Later, he defended his actions by claiming, in his estimation, that the scenario was clearly a trap, and that the Kobayashi Maru's crew were most likely already dead, and if they were alive, this quick death was preferable to the treatment that they would have received as prisoners. Enhanced by holographic technology, the Kobayashi Maru no-win scenario test would continue throughout Starfleet's history. 
almost every cadet in the fleet would experience some form of this test, though from time to time it would be changed from commanding a starship-type mission to other unexpected scenarios. One other variation of this test was creating a situation where a cadet had to make a choice between saving one individual or saving another. In this test, two Starfleet officers or civilians would be hurt in an explosion or catastrophe, and the cadet being tested would enter the area and be forced to choose which person to save. Though some softer elements have continually questioned the use of the no-win scenario, Starfleet Command has remained firm on the advantages of having such a test. Not only was it very revealing about the cadet taking it, but also revealing to the cadet themselves, while simultaneously preparing them for an eventuality that was quite possible out in deep space. And so these types of tests endure, and continue to spark both fear and confidence into the cadets that are taking them, earning this test its very real reputation in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth. What do you think of the beta canon on the Kobayashi Maru test? Did you like me exploring this sort of topic through beta canon? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel defeat the no-win scenario? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.